Hello, James Flotten here with the Minnesota Space Grant. I want to talk about shear pins and rivets and friction fits as they pertain to separation, separation of a high power rocket while it's in flight. So I have here a high power rocket, a little bit too long to even see. Um, and um, basically this particular rocket, first of all, it has a nose cone that comes off. So there is a separation point right there. And then this rocket has, it's set up for dual deploy. So it has a removable avionics bay, an av bay. So here is a collar or sometimes called a switch band. And the rocket comes apart on either side of that switch band. So um, it's in fact important because I need to be able to access this end of the avionics bay. And I need to be able to access this end of the avionics bay. So, um, I just want to make sure that the rocket doesn't come apart while it's flying. And here comes my cat, who is very interested, apparently, in rocketry. Hello. OK, see you later. So let's talk about these three separation points and which ones I want to separate during a flight. So um, first of all, the nose cone. I do want the nose cone to come off, but not until fairly late. I want the nose cone to come off just before I hit the ground, maybe 500 feet up or so, to pull out the main parachute, which is up here. So this is a separation point. I just don't want it to open too early. On the other hand, so here I am at my avionics bay, and I do want to separate below my avionics bay. And the reason is that's how I get out my drogue parachutes. My drogue parachutes down here, I do need this to separate during the flight. Actually, I want that to separate first at Apogee. And then this one above the avionics bay, I don't want that one to separate at all during flight at all, okay? So I need it to be able to separate so I can get the rocket ready to fly. But when I fly the rocket, I don't want this separation ever. So how do I accomplish this? Well, I have three options. One of the options is called a friction fit. And so, in fact, I want a friction fit for this one. This is the lowest, the first separation point. I want to make sure that the bottom of the rocket, which is here, can come off relatively easily at Apogee when the motor eject goes off, or perhaps I will put into my avionics bay a drogue ejection charge. So I want either of those to be able to drive off the bottom of the rocket relatively easily. So I'll make this a friction fit. So friction fit basically means if I hold the rocket vertically and hold it above that point, I don't want this part to fall off, but I do want it to be able to come off if I were to at least shake it or pull on it, but not twist on it. Explosions never twist, so it does have to be able to come off. If it's too loose, it falls off, then you can put tape on this. In fact, here's my recommendation for taping a friction fit, is that you put your tape vertically. Prince, one layer of tape, vertical, right here, and then try it again. And then if that doesn't work, maybe go 180 degrees. Ah, oh, there is some tape on there already, vertically. And then, you know, if that's still too loose, put some more tape on vertically. And then put some more tape on here. In other words, just add thickness, perhaps in just two spots, until it feels reasonably tight. It can come apart, but doesn't want to just fall apart on you. Um, it turns out that when you go outside to launch a rocket, the weather will be, well, it will be whatever it is, but it will be different for sure than where you were when you built the rocket inside. So the best you can do is get the rocket ready to have a reasonable friction fit indoors and then double check when you get outdoors. On the other hand, if it's too tight, you can't get it apart, then you definitely need to have sandpaper along. So bring tape along to make it tighter, bring sandpaper along to make it looser, and then set it up as best you can indoors and then adjust it, check it and adjust it when you're out of doors. Here's a quick comment before I uh, go to the upper two separation possibilities. And that is, well, why, why would a rocket separate? Well, first of all, of course, if you fire explosions, then you want the rocket to separate in the location of the explosion. So that's appropriate, but rockets can come apart too early. And here's a couple of reasons why. One possibility is that the upper section of the rocket, the nose cone in particular, is more aerodynamic than the lower section of the rocket. This rocket has well, it has something sticking out here, which is giving it drag. It has this camera pod, which is giving it drag. It has fins, of course, which is going to give it drag. So in other words, you can have drag separation. The drag separation basically is 
The rear of the rocket has more drag, the upper section has less drag, and the two parts want to fly somewhat differently. So you need to make sure that your friction fit is tight enough that this natural drag separation, which will be a few pounds, it won't be a huge force, uh, doesn't pull the rocket apart, but were it to pull it apart, it would pull it apart right here. That's the expectation. Here's another possibility, and that is inside the rocket, you have air. And that air is the pressure of, well, atmospheric pressure at surface level. But when you fly, you will fly to a lower pressure environment. And so the air that's inside the rocket will expand and try to get out. And so good idea to put a bleed hole. This rocket has a little tiny bleed hole right there. So this is a bleed hole in the lower section of the rocket, which just lets air get out. And if there were to be overpressurization, natural overpressurization based on flying too high or flying high, shall we say, it would tend to expand the rocket and push this rear part off. So I want to avoid that as well. So the friction fit needs to be tight enough to avoid drag separation. And it's a good idea to put a bleed hole somewhere in the lower section to just make sure that the air pressure doesn't slowly push your friction fit apart while you're flying. On the other hand, remember, I don't want this part, this is right above the collar, I don't want that to come apart ever. And so the way I'm going to accomplish that is I'm going to rivet these two pieces together. So let me just take this out of the way. There's the lower section. I do want that to come off. Here's the upper section. I'm going to take the avionics bay, which of course is underneath the upper section here, and I'm going to use rivets to hold them together. I'll show you a rivet in a minute, but a rivet is basically, it, they can be metal, they can, well, you can even bolt the two together. You could glue them together, don't do that. And the reason I don't want you to glue them together is I want to be able to get this apart so that I can service the end and put explosive charges and other things on this end of the ab bay, and then you assemble the rocket, and then you make sure it doesn't come apart during the flight. And so a rivet is actually a plastic piece, but a plastic piece that's very strong and therefore won't allow this part of the rocket to come apart, um, even when there are explosions going on. So rivet this one, rivet here, friction fit here. And then what about this one? Well, it turns out I want something in between. This is a friction fit of sorts. It's a little bit loose right now, but here's what can happen. When you blow off the hind end of the rocket right now, for instance, to get the drogue out, you will shock the rocket. And when you shock the rocket, the forward end of the rocket will try to keep going and the rear end of the rocket will try to stop. And what will happen is the nose cone will come flying off. So even if you have a very tight friction fit, you're likely to lose your nose cone at apogee and it will drag out or it might drag out the main parachute with it. And that of course defeats the whole purpose. You wanna keep the main parachute in place until you're closer to the ground. So don't count on a friction fit only for the upper section. On the other hand, I don't want to rivet it, because if I rivet it, then I can't get this off ever. So I want to do something intermediate, and that's called a shear pin. Shear, S-H-E-A-R, something that can break by horizontal forces. So a shear pin is sort of like a, a rather weak rivet. A rivet, or a very tiny piece of nylon machine screw, that when you have an explosion, you can break the pins and you can get this thing off. So one final time, friction fit at the bottom, to allow that to come apart relatively easily at Apogee, rivets above the switch band to make sure that those two parts do not come apart during the flight, and then shear pins at the very top to allow this to come apart, but only when I have an explosion and not during shocks, shocks associated in this case with getting your drogue parachute out. Okay, so what, are, what do these things look like? Well, let me set my rocket aside. Let's do another camera. and take a look at rivets and shear pins. Okay, so here are rivets, here are shear pins, and here's some pieces of tubing. So this happens to be coupler tubing, this happens to be airframe tubing, and so of course the coupler tubing will fit inside. So I'm gonna demonstrate how this works. First of all, I have a note to myself, Five thirty-second inch, that's the diameter of the hole that I need to drill for a rivet. So let's say that I want these two parts not to come apart. So here's what I'm going to do. I just have to find my marks here. I have some marks here to tell me how to line them up. And in fact, I've already drilled the hole, and that hole went through both the coupler tube and the airframe tube. And let me put in a rivet. So a rivet comes in two parts. I don't even know what their technical names are. 
There's the part that goes in the hole, and then there's the part that causes the first part to splay. So when you get a rivet, often those two parts are attached together. They look just like that. Okay. On the other hand, those two parts can come separated. And it's not a bad idea, in fact, to install them separated. So for instance, here's the bottom part. I'm gonna put the bottom part through the hole. Oops, if I can get it through the hole. Well, first of all, I gotta get it lined up. Put the bottom part through the hole. There it is. So the bottom part is through the hole and then I can take the top part and put it in the middle of the bottom part. So it's part way in and then I punch it in. And when I punch it in, what it does is it takes the two legs of the bottom part and it spreads them out. And so now that will not come back out again and it's very strong and these two parts won't separate. On the other hand, I can get that back out if I need to, but I'll probably need something like a knife to get under there and pull it up. And only once I've pulled it up part way can I get it to come back out again. So there it is, the rivet is back out. On the other hand, I'm gonna put it in for this next part of the demonstration. So there it is, halfway in, punch, all the way in. There's the rivet. Now over here, I have some notes, and the note says 5 64 inch shear pins. So I've already pre-drilled that. So here's a shear pin. The shear pin is a, a nylon machine screw. It's a 256, 256 nylon machine screw, and I want to be able to punch that in as well. So let me just get that in. Hopefully. You know what, I'm going to take the rivet out because I want to show you what a shear pin looks like when I break it. So first of all, I need to allow these parts to come apart. So the rivet is out. So I can get my shear pin in. Make sure those are very well lined up. We can practice this part. There we go. Okay, so now the shear pin is in for the delay. And so in the case of a nose cone, you would put two or three perhaps shear pins into the nose cone to hold it in place so that it really needs quite a bit of force. And this force will be applied by an explosive charge to break the nose cone loose. And then when you calculate how much charge you need, make sure you include the shear pin in the calculation. So here I have it, a shear pin takes I'm trying to remember 20 pounds, 25 pounds anyway, to break. So if I were to take these two sections and um, I would have to pull quite hard before I can shear that pin. Let's see if I can do it. Here we go. One, two, three, shear. Oh, there it is. I broke it. So the shear pin is still here. The head of it is here. The rest of it is there and it has broken apart. So I got them apart. It was just pretty hard to do so. And before I were to fly this thing again, I would have to pull that out of that hole. I'd have to poke this out of this hole so I can open the holes back up again and then I can reset the shear pins. So what we're gonna do actually is for a dual deploy rocket, typically we will shear pin the nose cone onto the body tube, and then we will install explosive charges and fire them on the ground and make sure the charges are adequate to break the shear pins. Again, two, perhaps three shear pins. And then once we have checked that we have Adequate explosive charges, we will reset the entire thing with new shear pins because they're single use devices, and then we will fly. So be ready to get that shear pin out. There's the broken shear pin there. That's the top of it, broken. And then there's the bottom of it, and that will have to get poked out. Let's see if I can get that out here. Poke it, poke it through. There it is. There's the bottom of the shear pin. Those are the two broken parts. A rivet, on the other hand, never breaks. That's the whole point of a rivet is, a rivet is this sort of device, but even when you have explosive charges, you can't get that to break.